They thought of the faraway grave on the plain. They thought of the comrade who came not again. They lifted their glasses and sadly they said, We drink to the name of the mate who is dead. Henry Wilson. It is so bloody damp down here. I know we're in a cellar, but I don't suppose you have a window we could open or anything. Yeah, we've got a vent that leads outside somewhere. Maddie, can you open it up? Get some fresh air coming through? I'm pretty sure it's got a dumpster or something sitting on top of it right now. Besides, I'm busy. Just grinning there. Can we get this over with? We've done this before, old man. You know it takes a while to set up. Calm your farm. I think I'd appreciate your tone. Sorry. Can we get some more lights on, maybe? With all the crude you've got scattered around the place, I like to at least know where I'm putting my feet. Ashley, would you mind? Thanks. You're more organized than last time, I see. Practice makes perfect. Hey, Maddie. How much more wire do we need? I think that's enough. Great. Now. Che? What's up, little P? I found you a chair. Oh, thank you. So, this whole thing surely it's not legal, yeah? Maddie wasn't clear on that. Yes, the council found it confronting. For good reason, I suppose. Because it's utterly upset the natural order. It's not just bureaucracy. Shush. Most rules can be bent, after all. And Maddie has a particular fascination with breaking rules. As I'm sure you've realized. Hey, don't give her all the credit. Bah. Is this related to her gambling for time? Mm-hmm. So, the transfer was the same sort of magic we're doing now, yes. Small scale, though. Doing it on a larger scale requires a bit more preparation. The council successfully suppressed all available information about it, though. For good reason. What happens if something goes wrong? Well... You don't tend to mess it up more than once. Or try it again after you fail, for that matter. Stubborn scholars notwithstanding. What do you even call this sort of magic thing? Question's irrelevant. Because it's banned. Badass? I call it badass. Well, by definition, it's a conduit for two. 
But, looking past all the smoke and mirrors and fancy names, you can just call it Necromancy. From your hazy memories, a certain word calls out to you. Necromancy. You try desperately to remember what it meant. Necromancy. Death. Oh. This fragment of a memory stays with you. Piece together the past. Remember what transpired. And never forget you are scattered practice. It's got to be the right place. No reason to go back because the arrow says go this direction. But when you can't figure out Let's try it again. house rules. Clicking on it does nothing.
gotta be something related to that. No other button show up. rules. We welcome both living and dead. Patrons will be served in the order the that is rules. We welcome both living and the dead. Don't ask who's alive. If someone wants you to know, they'll tell you. Three. The dead have 24 hours, strictly enforced. 24 hours and five minutes is not 24 hours. Four. No, we don't have Wi-Fi. Yes, there's no cell reception. Either and radio signals don't play nice together. Five. Report broken items and other anomalies to staff. We can't clean up your broken virus or space your if we don't know about it. Six. Don't feed the Eidolon. They can't eat and offering them food is a my of that cruel fact. Alright. Oh, now the door's open. Nice. Pretty unremarkable coffee. Brisa speaks Chinese, but exclusively uses it to mock people to their faces. I'm very self-conscious about my top hat now. Observed little girl running around cafe with knife unsupervised. Came down with deep sense of ennui after visiting. Was really told to stop being a big dweebus after complaining about burnt taste in coffee. This coffee some of the best I've ever had. Five stars. This closer, I have no taste buds. The door closes. Maddie sighed and began cleaning the glass. She glanced up at the person who just walked in. But he didn't seem quite ready to approach the counter. Hey. Mate. You right? You, you can see me. Yeah, clear as day. You gonna order something? I, um, I've been walking around for hours. Nobody was listening to me. I don't know how I ended up here. I think you'll find it was the front door. He chuckled nervously and took a deep breath. Right. Uh, where am I? This, dearly departed, is the terminal. Carlton's finest. De departed. They say our coffee's to die for. So, 
uh, I don't really know how to go about this. Ask me anything, man. It's not like you're the first disheveled and disoriented dead dude to drop in. Hmm. What does everyone else ask? Well, they generally start with that one. Ah, shit. And they always say that. Then there's the embarrassed silence. Alright, alright. I get it. You always this mean to everyone who comes through? Or just the pitiful ones like me? Just the pitiful ones. I guess that's consistent. I always felt like people saw me as a pitiful guy. Nah. I'm just kidding. No. I promise. You're right. I'm a damning sad sack. I don't even know how I died. But I bet it was pitiful and meaningless. Just like everything else about me. I'm never even going to have a chance to make things better for myself. I'm stuck like this. Come on. And now I'm sitting in a coffee for dead people falling apart in front of the barista. Pull yourself together, my dude. He blinked and slowly came back to earth. No breakdowns in the cafe, please. I promise, man. You are okay. I know how it is. Are, are you? No. But I've had a hundred people like you walk through the door. So I'm just averagely messy. Can't even do that right. Keyshawn, you have 24 hours left on this plane until you have to move on to the next place. And I don't think you want to spend them having one big, long, extended panic attack. 24 hours? Ah, oh, shoot. What I'm saying is, uh, everything's okay. Just take some deep breaths. We'll sort this out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to be a fuss. It's not like I have anything else to be doing. Don't worry about it. Are you sure? I'm kind of a burden. You're not. Chin up, mate. Let me tell you about this place. It's pretty cool. So I first wandered in here about four years ago. And that's how long you got before you gotta move on. 24 hours. Twenty-four hours to find out who killed you. That'd probably be a good detective movie, right? Race against time. I guess. But what's the point if you have to move onwards at the end anyway? Kind of strips it of its meaning. I don't even know if you'd care once you're in the next place. I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of a nihilist to be anything but a constant buzzkill. Yeah, I guess the pressure sounds like a lot. Honestly, I'm still wrapping my head around all of this. It seems a bit outlandish, doesn't it? Mm, that's the word. I guess it'd be disappointing if you found out that you just died quietly in your sleep or something, though. Yeah. Most people don't die from being murdered. It's mostly sickness, or old age, or lawnmower accidents. Well, they call them accidents, but really loads of lawnmowers are possessed by evil spirits. That said... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You can't just drop that like it's nothing. Possessed lawnmowers? Seriously? Anything with spinning blades tends to attract them. 
garden equipment, garbage disposals, blenders. They're a right pain in the arse. Gotta exercise the blender at least once a month. That's wild. So, I don't know if it's weird to ask, but is everyone in here dead? Yeah. You said that this was a cafe for dead people. Does that mean it's everyone? Or are some of these people just really into ghost cafes? That might be an oversimplification. Not everyone in here is dead. But this is one of the only stopping points between here and there. So we get a lot of your type. That's also why the rent is so high. Cause those vampires who own the place know we get a lot of foot traffic. Literal vampires? No. Just baby boomers with lots of money. Ah. Same thing, I guess. So, to answer your question, there are nine customers in here right now. Out of those nine, yourself included, I'd say four or five of them were just passing through on their way to the next place. How can you tell? Once you've worked here for a while, you get sort of a sixth sense for this kind of thing. Gotcha. Speaking of sixth senses, I've got one for trouble. You have two sixth senses. Hello, Ashley. Ashley was a young girl who'd adopted Maddie and Jay a couple years back. Much in the same way that a puppy adopts a squeaky toy. She was grossly smart and a budding genius, but still a kid nonetheless. Today she smelled strong food in the world. Her arm was coated with it. Maddie knew she had to help her clean it off the drain later. And she wore a look in her face that said, I'm an invincible genius. She was mostly right about that one. And Maddie hated it. Alright, I know the name of Spit it out. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Cut the crowd, kid. What do you need this time? I'm dealing with a customer. I'm not really needing any attention. I am dealing with a customer. I need someone to hold the joints to me while I screw something in. Don't you have any clamps? We got a bunch for your birthday last month. They're all being used for other very important things. They were not. I'm pretty sure I saw one upstairs about 10 minutes ago. I need a helper. Hey, I could probably ease. I could actually. We've got to let us work. We're not going to get anything done if I keep going. If I have to keep going up to the old screwdriver and come to the steak knives. Ah, Ashley's power was legendary. But over time, Maddie had grown immune to it. Hey, no dice. What about Che? He can help me. Hey, he's in the kitchen, emptying the dishwasher. Uh, you know, the dishwasher that you were meant to empty an hour ago? Oh, oh. <laughs> It's really no trouble. Hey, why don't I take this guy? He doesn't have anything to do. He's dead. Hey, come on. Ashley, I don't have the energy to argue with you. I'm sure he just wants to relax. Then I ain't just let out of you. Also, manners. God, we talked about this. You have to be more respectful in front of customers. Please. Happy to go upstairs. 
really, it's fine. I don't have anything better to do. And I'm super dead. I'm cool with it. That's me, Keyshawn, very dead guy. You sure? I can just send her back upstairs. Promise, it's fine. I just sit around to be a pain otherwise. Come, Peon. We've work to do. Deep down, Manny knew that she wasn't giving Ashley enough attention. And that was causing her to act out. She felt guilty as hell about it. But at the same time, she didn't think she'd be able to solve that particular problem anytime soon. For both their sakes, she had to work in keeping the cafe afloat. Even if it meant that Ashley would be required to deal with stuff on her own for a little while. And she knew she was being callous. Her internal monologue was doing a very good job of whispering cruel nothings to her in quiet moments. But, even then, she had to truly wonder if there wasn't... You know, I reckon this place needs more plants. God darn it, Che. Don't sneak up on me like that, you old nuisance. What's in your mind, Maddie? Uh, I was drifting off. Did I look like I was thinking weighty thoughts? Extremely. It's nothing important. Just my resting face. Nah, it's different this time. How so? Right now, your express reminds me of that time you challenged that samurai cosplayer to a fist fight. Oh. Uh, you mean the one who barged in? waving his gift store katana around and demanding satisfaction after I told him I want to put 15 shots in his coffee. That's the really specific facial expression to refer to. What's it look like? The natural reaction of someone who's just been threatened with thousand-fold Nippon's deal? You don't have to reenact it. The memory's precious enough that I can picture it clearly. A sort of deep disgust. Mixed with a tinge of pity and just a touch of derision. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing so many of these words. Ha! It me. What a mood. You alright? Real talk. I'm fine. Is this an I'm actually fine, fine? Or more of a I'm having trouble processing and or expressing my feelings and would like the conversation to move in a different direction, fine? The latter. Pharaoh. Offers will open if you like to talk things out. In the meantime, sorry. Can I grab that tea towel? My hands are wet. Oh, yeah, here you go. So... Did you just feel like doing the dishes by hand, or... I could have sworn that I told Ashley to empty the dishwasher earlier. Nah, it's busted. Duralette's broke, so we'll have to get someone in to fix it. I don't want to make Ashley wash it by hand anyway. Her arm get rusty. So, I did it. No problem. Makes sense. So anyway, we're going to have to organize a repair. Unless you want to let Ashley to give it a shot. I'd make the call myself. But our landline stopped working last week. We have a landline? Yes. Ancient technology. You can transmit sound through a physical cable. An elegant tool for a more civilized age. Only works when you pay the phone bill, though. I don't know if it'd be cheaper to get it repaired. Or to just buy a new one and give Ashley the old one for parts. The costs are pretty close, all things considered. Hey, don't stress. Don't worry yourself into an early grave. Hey, you spent 50 years digging holes. Can't talk shit at me about digging holes in an early grave, can you, old guy? Ow, old guy. I'll have you know I'm barely uh, 170-ish. Where's the lie? It was the middle of a gold rush. Everyone and his dog was busy digging holes. Only thing different about me is that I eventually started digging up things more interesting than gold. Don't dig up any mobile phones though, did you? 
have got yourself a head start on learning how to work them. Hey, so, mm -hmm. I know you're a bit stressed right now, but I think we need to put in an order for more kitchenware soon. Ugh. I know, I know, it's another thing that costs money. We're beginning to run out of cutlery though. It keeps disappearing to somewhere, so I don't know how long I can wait before we get some more. Ugh, I don't know if we can afford it this month. Just, you know, everything's a bit too pricey right now. Doesn't help that the coffee cartels keep pushing prices up. I don't think the importer two servers over is part of the cartel. They seem quite nice. You ever spoken to them? They're obviously criminals with the rates they charge, wholesale my ours. And yet, we keep buying from them. Well, yeah, the beans are good, man. It's just everything else on top of them that's stressing me out. Uh, yes. I'll happily accept the blame for some of that. It's fine. You don't have to. I know it's all on me. I just got to figure out how to pay everything off. Everything and everyone. Ugh. The time debt the time debt we owe to the council of death is the absolute last thing I want to think about right now. I've lost enough sleep over it already. Hey, I'm here to help. I'm worried about you, you know. You've had a lot of responsibility to drop on you in a very short period of time, and I can't help but feel a little bit culpable for that. I know. Yeah. I know. And you. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Shh. It's alright. Hold yourself together. We'll figure it out, just like we always do. I just want to deal with it. I just don't want to deal with it, you know. I get it. And I don't want you to feel like I'm imposing or interfering too much. I know the coffee's yours now. Cafe's yours now. And even though things are a bit much at the moment, I know I keep saying this, Maddie, but I don't know how much time we have to deal with all this before things start falling apart. Things are already falling apart. Regardless, you're going to have to face reality at some point. Oh my god, I know. I don't need any more reminders from you. Back off, man. The council's always sitting at the back of my mind. I'm doing my best over here. My best is all I can do, okay? Just because you're my best friend, and my old boss, and my mentor, doesn't mean I need you preaching at me about how I need to deal with my problems. Because they're my problems now, not yours. Alright. No worries. I'll give you some space. Might go check on it, ask me. You seen her recently? She's upstairs. Drag the customer up there talking about clams or something. I better go rescue them. Be back in a bit. So we're going to strap a big old steak knife to it and make them fight each other. I love it. This is going to be great. I want to build something that gets put on that TV show, Road Battle Royale, with flamethrowers on it. Yeah. You're not going to put one on this little guy, are you? A flamethrower? Probably not. But I want you to record the fight on my phone so we can send it to the producers. Yeah, sure thing. Let's get this knife attached. Pass me those zip ties. Zip ties. And the knife. Knife? And my coffee. Are you sure? Who even gave you that? Coffee! Damn it. It's a coffee. It's a coffee. It's beginning to vibrate. Maybe it's good that your cup runs empty, yeah? I think my cup needs to run up with more espresso in it. I just, how many shots did you put in there? Too many, Keyshawn. But did anyone ask Icarus how many shots of espresso he had? Yeah, I'm reading a book about Icarus. He flew to the sun. 
I'm cultured. In unrelated news, I have a headache. Uh, I think you might want to read a little more about it, girl. Just a swiss ending to that one. I'm holding a knife, Keyshawn. No spoilers. Ah! No spoilers. Promise. Mm. Alright, I'll just say hi. Maybe she wants to make a knife at me this time. Who knows? Hey kids. Ah! Intruder. Keyshawn. My buddy. My pal. Did I get him? No. Uh, you missed. Damn it. But, wait. You do it on purpose? Extremely on purpose, yeah. I'm fine, by the way. Oh, it's just you. Would it have been worth it someone else? Probably. Unless they were an actual spy come to steal my robot design. Then it would have been good. I think I'm crashing. Oh no. Uh, is she okay? Did I kill her? She'll wake up in about 15 minutes with no ill effects. But you probably shouldn't give her any more coffee. She turned into a real goblin. Well, she told me that it'd make her imaginatively powerful. I mean, she's not wrong, but, you know, great power, great responsibility, yada yada yada. She's 13. Kids got plenty of energy already. Maybe not the sense of responsibility, though. Yeah, uh, I don't even know how I ended up sitting here attaching knives to robots. She's very convincing. You don't have to tell me, mate. She basically lives here. Her parents would kill me if they found out she nearly killed me. Pretty good blind girl, though. She makes me proud in the weirdest ways. Huh? Did she learn from the best? <laughs> she did. But the best definitely wasn't me. Maddie's pretty daily with knives. She loves her flashy tricks. Bad habit, probably. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm being very rude. My name's Cherry. I used to own this place. Now I just sort of sit around and cause trouble. Sometimes have knives on it. I'm Keyshawn, and I died today. From your hazy memory, certain words call out to you. These words may be the key to unlocking the mysteries of what happened in this place.
last one I can't recall. Genius? Like, come on, you focus on a few and try to remember what they meant. Perhaps with time you may be able to cling to more of the fragments that flutter through your mind. What fragments will you choose to carry with you? What is it that you find precious? How many can I choose? Yeah. Let's not go back there. So you gotta tap on like the top left hand corner. Ashley's journal, robot, robot's power ranking. Some memories seem to evade you. You may have to come back later to this one. Texture of the skin tests. Okay, can I get that one back? I need that one. So I can put that there, but I can't put it here. Requires more than three. All right, let's go back in and see what happens. If it'll let me. it'll be there. It's kind of inconsistent. Still though, a hallway that's only there sometimes. How do you get to the kitchen otherwise? There's another slightly longer one that we use instead. It's much less exciting, but on the other side it's consistently there. 
I love telling new people about it though. The reaction is always hilarious. I definitely didn't expect to be getting enthusiastic today over a weird quantum hallway. Or enthusiastic at all, actually. Because as soon as I stopped to think about it, I realized I'm actually extremely messed up about this. I understand your life has gotten very weird, very fast, conceptually speaking. Uh, uh, your own life. I should be better at talking about this now, shouldn't I? Uh, jeez, that's not a fun one to think about, huh? Just keep talking about the hallway so I can keep my mind off this. To be honest, I'm not sure I could even properly explain a lot of what goes on here. The building's mildly sentient, too much magic in the soil for it to not be, really. So the cafe's alive? Not necessarily. Plenty of things have come to live to life here, but as far as we can tell, the building itself doesn't really fall into that category. Also, it mostly tends to shift itself in ways that are more helpful instead of frustrating. So, quantum hallways. I'm making myself a cuppa. You want something? Nah, I'm good for now. Also, what's the barista's name? I think I actually catch it and I feel like a jerk. Ah, uh, Maddie? She's the owner now. Not just the barista. Still makes coffee, of course. But since he's the owner now, she has a lot more to juggle. Why are you asking? Got your eye on her? Eh? No. I have a boyfriend. Had. Oh, jeez, this is a lot. I can't imagine how he's feeling. Try not to think about it. Alright. Okay. Yep. Okay. You want that drink now? I think I want something a little more potent than coffee right now. Sorry. Don't enable him, Keyshawn. Shush. I can get you something stronger, mate. Would you like bourbon? Oh. Or is that too weak? I, I thought this was a cafe. Well, it is. Mostly. We do serve alcohol. And stronger things are requested. Stronger? Like what? Who go to? No idea what that is. Absent? Pure ethanol? You think a place like this would have anything stronger than that? Stronger than pure ethanol? Sure. Remind me later when I might pull up some of my special reserve. Don't enable him, Keyshawn. Hey, someone's got to go. I know you're not going to touch yourself without setting it on fire. I have perfectly good reason for wanting to set a puddle of this dead soul on fire. Well, we'll agree to disagree on that one. So, Keyshawn, what'll it be? Actually, I changed my mind on the coffee. Can I order something complex? Gotta cheat myself on my last day on Earth. I'm after a sugar rush. If we have the ingredients, it shouldn't be an issue. Maddie can whip it up for you. Cool, cool. In that case, can I have a large quadruple shot double vanilla caramel no foam super hot reverse coconut milk macchiato oh my god with two sugars and whipped cream on top uh maddie yes dearest uh i don't quite know how is this real I was gonna ask for a splash of bourbon in it, but that seemed a little extra. Well, yes, it is too much. It is a bad order, and I hate it. How bad? Worst one you've ever seen? No, I just hate it. Dang. Every single word of that increased my 
urge to simply express and see my fire so I won't have to think about making coffee ever again. Except the bourbon beer. I put that in my coffee too. So, with all that in mind, I have a counter offer. Yeah? I'll make you another double shot long black and I'll put bourbon in. But I won't call you a hipster this time. Mm. If you decline my offer, I will strip your soul from your body and use it to scrub the collars at closing time. They will smell delicious afterwards, if that's any time to waste. Ugh, yikes. That does sound like a competitive counter offer. Not the soul thing. I'll take the coffee. My generosity knows no bounds. Normie. So, in conclusion, that order sucked because it's inor- inordinately complex to make, has a heart attack worth of sugar in it, and is something that only impatient jerks ask for. Is it possible to die twice? Yup. You can die twice if you're brought back from the dead, or if you manage to really annoy someone between here and the next place, which is more likely because resurrection is illegal. But if you're asking whether you can get a heart attack or whatever, the answer is no. Life and death have a slightly different meaning here. You can't die from natural causes. It's a bit complex and weird, and we're still in the process of figuring out how it all works. More than 20 years old, and I still haven't made proper sense of it yet. Just got my vague ideas. Right. So it's keeping me from just staying here. Like, I'm already dead. Why do I have to go to the next place? You've got a certain number of hours you're allowed to remain on the edge of the mortal room. Hours are fungible. Fungible? They can be bought, sold, and exchanged, generally speaking. But the Council of Death always collects on debts owed to them, and you'll start running up a debt if you stay here too long. Your soul starts to get itchy, too. It's not something you want to experience. We've had a few stay past there a lot of time, and they've gotten very uncomfortable very fast. It starts with general irritability, and then worse things begin to happen. Uh huh. It's a weird thing to wrap your head around. How long do I have before I need to make myself scarce? You get 24 hours, any longer, and we start to pick up the tab since you're on our premises. And as charming as you are, we've already racked up too much time debt from letting people stick around past their expiry date. And cash-wise, we're extremely poor. We've been a bit too lenient in the past, letting people stay just a little longer instead of gently suing them up to the next plane of existence, etc. You know the drill. But hey, since hours are fungible, you can always acquire them some other way. There's something happening tonight, actually, that you might be interested in. Seriously? You're still doing that? Shush. You know the council doesn't look on that stuff favorably. Ned said so himself. It draws customers and helps us shave down the debt. I'll take whatever I can get. And hey, damn Ned. We have a 13 year old right here, you know. Yeah. She's heard enough coarse language for a lifetime. I'm not too worried about her. She's right though. What? Every time Ned comes around, he makes you guys really stressed out. Maybe not you so much. But Maddie gets nervous and it brings down the mood. Man. So, damn Ned. I think you've had too much coffee today, young lady. I'm crashing so hard right now, you have no idea. It's like I was crashing earlier, but that was just a pre-crash. And I'm having a double crash or something. So, all I ask is that you try and keep the swearing to a minimum when customers are around. Okay. Does Keyshawn count? It's fine. A couple of my housemates are tradies, so you learn to ignore it pretty quick. Are tradies? Were tradies? Ugh. They're still tradies. I'm gonna stay changed career in the last couple days. But they're not my roommates anymore. Because. Hey, mates, have I mentioned how much being dead sucks? Because it sucks and I feel extremely bad about it. I'm having a pretty bad time right now, in general, to be honest. Yep. Even this adapting your language is a pain, isn't it? 
Want a proper drink now? Without coffee in it? Yeah. That'd be good. The TV didn't say anything about there being a storm tonight. Huh? It looks like a decent sized one's rolling in. Melbourne weather strikes again. I'll go upstairs and close the windows. Cheers. Come on, Ashley. Let's clean up your workbench while we're up there, yeah? Mm. Do you need a bribe? Yes. I have some chocolate hidden away. Acceptable. Wait. Dead people can still get drunk, yeah? What else do you think we serve alcohol? To make money? Well, yeah. Hang on. Do I even have my wallet? Doubt it. I don't. Yeah. How does that work? Why do I have my clothes but not the contents of my pockets? I don't know, dude. Everyone's experience is different. Death doesn't follow many rules. Only universal rule I can think of is that you can't stay. People don't generally come in without their clothes, fortunately. Mm. So, what about the strength? I guess they're gonna give me straight vodka or something? Why is that? You don't like making complex drinks? Yeah, dude, no. I don't like making ridiculous caffeine laced milkshakes for overcompensating soccer dads. I'm happy to mix a cocktail within reason. Oh, okay. What's he got then? Chase got everything you can think of. And then some. I could go for a mint julep. Hey. What's that outside? Outside? Some guy out in the rain? Ah, oh, shoot. Maddie? Maddie, what's up? Let's get started on that drink. Good morning. Um, hi. Hello, recently departed. Hey, that hat you're wearing kind of makes you look like Ned Kelly. I could have sworn you were standing outside literally a second ago. So, how'd he die? Good morning to you too, Ned. It's five o'clock in the afternoon, Madeline. Get lost, Ned. That's not even my full name. Isn't it, Maddie? Chase said it was, and he never lies. He never said that. Well, no. But it was worth a try. A try at what? Catching me off balance? Some suit along those lines. Mate, I'm so off balance right now that a light breeze would knock me head over arse. Don't push me. Hey, this mint julep is great. Just wanted to contribute that to the conversation. So, you catch the game last night? Yes. I know that Carlton be calling you again. I don't care. Oof. Just make a polite conversation. You should try it sometime. Maybe. Not for you, though. You've never come in during daylight hours before. What do you want? Nothing much. I'd like to talk to Che at some point, but it can wait, seeing as he's missing? Planning on sending out a search party? Might do. It'd be a shame to lose an old friend by letting him wander onto some train tracks or something. Yeah, well... Shut up. He's upstairs last I saw. What was the last... What was the last you saw, Maddie? Tell me. Why are you like this? What was it? Last saw him walking upstairs. So he could be anywhere then. Probably fled the country to dodge the massive time debt you lot are racking up. He can't go far. I've got him on a pretty tight leash. And in regards to the debt... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. it's not your problem. Uh, you must not have heard. Not your problem. 
Che, your nuisance friend Ned is here. Boy, I'm a distinguished gent, not a nuisance. I'll be down in a sec. Yes, sir, but you also work for the Council of Death. So even if you are a distinguished gent, it cancels out. Is the Council of Death like a normal city council? Except for wherever dead people live. Yeah, but the only trash that needs to be collected is right in front of me. This guy? Me? No. You. You're at the trash, Ned. The trash is you. It's you. Ned, the trash man from hell. Because councils pick up trash. That's the joke. Oh, cool. He's even got a head shaped like a rubber spin. It's totally fitting. Hmm. I'm not from hell. I don't care. And to be clear, Ned, in case we weren't already, you are the trash. Yeah, I get it. You know how long Che's going to be? Don't know. He was busy upstairs with Ashley. Yeah, I had to hide like five steak knives from her. I didn't even know we had five steak knives. Been quiet there, mate. How long have you been sitting there? Does it matter? Well, your employees being very rude to me. So if you'd heard any of that, I keep trying to tell them. Ah, my employee. Yes. We have some catching up to do. I don't follow. Did she quit? Did you fire her for gross incompetence? Huh, far from it. There's been a bit of a shakeup in the cafe's management structure since you last visited. Oh no, don't tell me you gave her the whole thing. Okay, I won't tell you. I tried to tell you before, man. Hey, does anyone else like mint juleps? Because this is great, I'm nearly done, but also my tongue is numb and I'm wondering what the deal is with that. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I need a drink before we go through all that. Sure, the usual? Yes, please. How come he gets a curly straw? So, Jay, send me a tale of how and why you handed on a cafe to this person. Well, every man's got his price. Can my price be a curly straw too? Buddy, I'll give you two if it means you stop complaining about numb lips. Yeah, um, what did you make this with? I couldn't find half the ingredients, so I just put a bunch of herbal to it. Chili seeds. It's got some of the stuff though, so it's a mint julep in spirit, if nothing else. Does this have any mint or julep in it at all? It definitely may be lacking mint, and I cannot confirm nor deny the existence of the mythical julep. You asked for her too early, I thought, so there you go. Missing complete. Maddie, I'm getting very drunk, very fast. Ergitude does that to you. Here, I think you should have a little light on. I'll get you some water. I'm as strong as an ox. I don't need to lie down. Kishan, my dude, you absolutely need to get horizontal as soon as possible. You can sober up in one of the booths of the back. It's nice and quiet over there. <laughs> I'll fight you. No, you won't. Up oh, you get me. Bloody hell. It would have been helpful if you told me about this before. Probably. I'm not worried about it. Maddie knew what she was getting into with this whole cafe situation, and it's natural that it might take a while for her to get the hang of running a business. Bloody hell. Bit of a dog's dinner, though, isn't it? Oh, uh, for sure. But it'll get better. Like I said, not worried about it. Well, you might want to hold your judgment on that for the moment. I'm unfortunately here on official business. Uh, I shouldn't have given you the straw then. No, you shouldn't have. I look quite silly. Want me to get rid of it? It's just Maddie. She won't use it to derail our conversation to make it look a fool or anything like that. Straw? No, I'll get you one after you have a nap. You can sip the water like a normal person. I'll put it with the dirty dishes then. The sacrifices I make for this job. Hey, you met me through it. So it can't have been all bad. That was bloody a hundred years ago. Man, really? 
longer. Time flies, you're immortal, huh? Quasi immortal. This little rust book still got an expiry date somewhere down the line. What's this about immortality? Hey, you should buy more plants. Shut up. Sorry. Continue. Immortality. Nothing that I trust you with, that's for sure. Uh, don't you want to see Crossfield only being rude to youngsters in a hundred years? Truly, I do not. The far future doesn't need amateur necromancers. You're a loss. So, you two heading upstairs? Actually, Ned does. It's like there's something friendly important to discuss with you. Oh, it's about the debt you owe to the council. Yeah, I know. What about it? Matter. It's time. You owe us over 600 hours. Kay signed a contract for hours or the cafe. You own the cafe, so you own the debt. And tonight, I've come to collect. Put it so close. And then lastly, Oof, tab.
All right, let's look around a little bit, see where we can place these. And then we will call that a game. Though now I'm upstairs, so the question is, can I go back downstairs? Brad took a sip from his beer. It was non-alcoholic, but there was something about the taste that put him in that perfect state of ease and alertness. Maybe it was the placebo effect. Maybe it was the fact that his... The expression of X face was expecting when Maddie came out of the kitchen carrying his weight. Expected but not impatient. The expression fitted his posture of sitting upright with hands folded and resting in front of him. You're overdue this week, said Matt. He tapped a list of rules that Maddie kept posted by the door. This 24 hour rule. Are you sure you've been enforcing it? I th think how we run things around here is none of your business, said Matt. Actually, it absolutely is my business, said Matt. In fact, keeping the rules is basically my only business. That's kind of what the word enforcer means. I'm supposed to scold you for breaking the rules. So out of me. Fine, said Maddie. Let me check your ledger. We don't keep a ledger, said Maddie. Maybe you should, said Maddie. Lots of places do. It's a great system. You have someone stand at the door and have to mark down whenever someone comes in or leaves. You forcibly evict people who are overstaying their welcome. I'm amazed you don't have a system like that in place. Some people overstay their welcome, other people understay it, said Che. There's no need to strictly keep track of how long people stay, right? Just maintain the balance. You're right, said Ned. All that matters is maintaining the balance. So maintain the balance, because when you don't, then we have a problem. We're a bit to our staff to have someone acting as a full-time doorman, said Maddie. Figure it out, said Ned. He tapped the board, listing the rules. Change 24 hours, 23 hours. When you say 24 hours, people think you just coll colloquially mean one day, and they don't pay attention to the specific time. We say 23 hours, people actually have to keep track of what time it is. That would be fine, said Che, except for the part where you're cutting time if people stay. Trust me, said Nat. Anyone will go right up to the limit. That's probably going to overdo it. 23 hours is going to be 23 hours plus an extra 5 minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, hour plus, however long it takes to finish their drink. And if you, if they leave in less than 24 hours, who gives a shoot? I give a shoot, said Che. You're right, you should give a shoot, said Nat. In fact, you should celebrate whenever you manage to scoot someone out of here in under 24 hours because the balance is upset and you've got to correct it. You can either correct the balance one hour at a time or the council can come in here and repossess themselves. Or we can find someone who knows how to manage this property responsibly. He turned to Che. Come on, buddy. I don't want to have to take this place away from you. That would be quite the escalation, said Maddie. Well, you're already on the first level of escalation with the stern talking to, said Nan. Let's try not to escalate it any further. Chase side. Well, Maddie cut him off. We'll change the rule to 23 hours. Okay. Buzz off. Wow. Really? Said Ned. Well, okay then. And while you're rewriting the sign, you should also take the green tea frappuccino off the menu. Perhaps it'd be for coffee, not tea. Done, said Maddie. Wait, really? Said Ned. Darn, I didn't realize you were so open to feedback. Also, that caramel will take it under advisement, said Maddie, placing a hand on Ned's chest and physically pushing him towards the door. Hold up, said Ned. What are you doing? We're moving in on one to guests, said Maddie. I need the practice if we're going to start enforcing those rules you care so much about. Now I, said Ned, as he continues backpedaling to stay upright. 
Look, you could just buy, said Maddie as Ned crossed the threshold out of the cafe and Maddie shut the door in his face. She turned around, leaning her back against the door inside. Che raised an eyebrow. You're serious about the rule change? Yeah, said Maddie. I'll change the sign and the menu after we close tonight. Wait, really? The rule change is just to keep him off our back, said Maddie. And the menu thing? I haven't mean to take that off anyway, said Maddie. It's the kind of menu item that attracts the worst sort of people. Well, okay, said Che. Though I do think we should change the rule back 24 hours after things have had enough time to balance out. Of course, said Maddie. Wouldn't it want to have had the balance too far in the opposite direction? What would we do with all the extra time anyway? Hiding up here. Can't complete that one. This one is missing. Like to see.